fantastic. And yeah, let's uh, let's continue that. And we'll hand right over um, to Jürgen. You're here. All right, Jürgen is, Jürgen is here. And um, <clears throat> although, my stuff works finally. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I, I try to understand as much as possible from Tim's presentation. Um, uh, the, some of it is was pretty um, deep tech for me, too deep tech for me in, in, in programming. Um, although I know uh, I understood very well the real world um, um, applications. Now Jürgen is much more from my industry and uh, from my from my background, and that's uh, that's uh, that's energy and uh, and especially the energy dilemma. Um, how do we um, how do we harvest energy and where do we where do we spend it right Jürgen is from the aviation industry so you can imagine that uh, needs a lot of energy and um, and he is uh, he is uh, the first uh, who looked at a hydrogen power flying in uh, 2008 you just told me that's quite a long ago um, and he works uh, to launch an airline to develop re real carbon neutral flying so that is interesting for me how that should be possible i'm more of this uh, uh, area let's just reduce as much as possible the whole um, the whole airline traffic that would be good for the planet or for the climate so um, i'm interested to hear the your take on that young um, that should actually have started. Uh, hope you can see it, everybody. Very first, well. Welcome screen. Okay. Uh, first ahead, I'm not talking about airline today. I'm talking about the sustainable energy dilemma because uh, we have all these um, nice uh, projects and statements, uh, political statements about the EU Green Deal, the uh, fit for 55, uh, we're all going to be, be very green very quickly. And just today I read um, that uh, we're not, we're failing on, in, uh, not we're, but uh, Germany is failing on 2030, um, on the 2030 uh, targets uh, for sure. And we're not going to go carbon neutral by 2040. So everything they, the politicians claimed is actually a big lie in my opinion. And I'm going to claim uh, not only I'm going to also give you examples why, and uh, I come out of the aviation industry, and this is how I got there. Uh, as uh, Kai mentioned, in 2008, I was working with a company called Virgin Green Funds of a famous uh, Richard Branson on an idea for a wing and crown that's uh, hydrogen powered. Um, that was my first way into thinking uh, hydrogen in aviation. Meanwhile, I know that hydrogen is uh, dead end. And uh, I will come to that too. And um, it's also, uh, we have to look into a long-term process and we cannot look at uh, a quick technological solution that uh, suddenly is a panacea for everything. And in one year, we're going to be flying carbon neutral. No, it's a real journey that we, we look at. And uh, it's also for other industries. So I try to have a broader look. Disqualifying political statements, I was actually asked if I could talk about it here, and that's uh, how this came up, in fact. So, so how do I get my... Hello, here we go. Okay. Just yesterday, uh, there was the... Uh, oh, this uh, region study of the IPCC came up and said, okay, we're not going to... Uh, stick to 1.5 percent. We can be happy by 2025. There's the next time window. If we fail that time window, we're going to fail the two percent mark, uh, two two degree mark, two degree Celsius uh, increase. So we fail this planet, in my opinion. Uh, we are talking, talking, talking. We're not actioning, and everything we do action is on small scale, and we're not thinking about the big picture. And if we look at the big picture, we blindside the real big challenges. Then I'm going to talk about sustainability. And it's just, when we talk about sustainability, you see number 13 is climate action. And everybody talks about climate action and everybody talks about gender equality and everybody talks about one or the other, but this is an entire um, issue. It's, a, it's an overall issue, a global issue. Sustainability, in my opinion, is, is far more than just one or two goals or sub goals or whatever. We have to look at it 
in a in an, uh, holistic way. And that goes beyond the sustainable development goals, because when I looked into the sustainable development goals and what we did in developing our airline idea was, yeah, but where is, for example, the issue of religious freedom? Where is the issue of um, uh, uh, of gender, of, uh, of um, not gender, but uh, race, uh, races like uh, black color, uh, yellow color, whatever you call it, you know, the, the ethnicities. And they're not in there, but they're in the human rights. So uh, we consider sustainability and our sustainability goals a little bit broader and say, we have to have an, a sustainable thinking and a social responsible thinking that goes actually beyond these first ideas. This is a summary of good ideas that are politically agreed upon and a, a political agreement usually is a minimum uh, a constant that they find. So we have to talk about respect and we have to talk about tolerance first of all. And then we have to talk about also respect and tolerance for the world's needs. So that's my opinion on sustainability. Then I find the road to sustainability is very harsh. It's uh, typically the, the uh, right-hand picture first. Uh, we make plans and then we face realities. And the, uh, the, first, um, the first you see on the, uh, the first flag you see on the your plan is uh, actually the first, fl uh, the first flag you see on, on the reality just beyond the, the first stones that you're facing. Um, it's also when you talk this, everybody wants to change, everybody wants to talk about the change, but if you talk about really to change, and that's my experience with most investors so far, I'm afraid to say, they go like, uh, yeah, it's not ours. Yeah, this is too big. Yeah, you have to do some, uh, talk to somebody else uh, who I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's political programs, but if you talk to the political programs, and yes, we spoke to EIB in detail, and they were very interested until it was about executing. And then there were some, yeah, but we don't have the, the, the idea. We don't have the, uh, we, we, we're not uh, doing aviation. We're not doing aviation in general, despite the fact we want to go green. Uh, no, it doesn't, doesn't help. Things like that. So suddenly there's nobody around and you look really hard and, and that's the process we're in, but just finalize, or not finalizing. We just got an investor who said, okay, well, we can do a, um, a syndicate investment for a little amount, um, we talk in aviation bailout, uh, Lufthansa 9 billion, we talk about 60 million to get started. Uh, we also talk about 1.5 billion on the 10 year plan to go carbon neutral, which is a big investment. Uh, but this is the kind of investment you need and you don't need a million or two to invest into some small thing and hope for a unicorn. Uh, you have to really think about what's the investment you're doing and what's the result of it. So my background, as I mentioned, there was a hydrogen hydrogen powered wick in 2008 we worked upon. Uh, we, thought, we thought at that time, this picture is from 2008, uh, we thought about uh, solar um, um, electrolysis, um, like in, in uh, Las Vegas at back in the time, uh, get the hydrogen and have the fleet in, um, in the Maldives by Maldivian air taxi at the time we spoke with. Uh, replaced not by more aircraft, but by these wicks. Um, unfortunately, then came Lehman, so the entire thing didn't take flight, but um, that was my first steps into sustainability. In Colibri, we started to think about, we want to do an airline, a regional airline. We need regional aviation. Everybody needs to travel. Yes, we can do a lot of online conferences, and I'm waiting for conference call bingo. Um, I've started my card already. There was uh, quite some trouble I had today connecting here. So yes, I got everything up and running, but uh, we have to meet person to person. And if you start talking to investor, you can do it on Zoom. I doubt if you talk more about uh, more than 10 million that, that any investor will give you the money without having seen you face to face. Um, so we need travel, we need, uh, we need a lot of travel and it will have to recover and it will recover once this pandemic is taken care of and uh, in Europe we believe that it's going to be next year. But when we start developing it, we thought about first of all, okay, we have people there and we're talking, we're, we're in Albania. Albania is one of the poor houses in Europe. We're not in Germany because Germany is too expensive. So when we talk about Albania, we said, okay, what do we do in order to get um, pilots and other uh, lead people going there? 
Is there any piano going on here? Sorry. Sorry, this gets to the. Um, so when we get this, when we have this um, set this up, we said, okay, well, where are we housing them? Um, there are no high quality houses that the pilots today expect, um, at least the serious ones or high, high level uh, uh, airline management expects. So we thought about, we have to build this. We have to, to build envi an environment where everybody is taken care of. We have to look after training. I came from aviation marketing and IT. My last official training dates six years back. In a, being employed, it was a four year drought I had. There was no training. Nobody cared about training the people. We buy the know-how. We, we take somebody from the market and they have to bring the know-how we have. Uh, but training own people is something they didn't look at. Uh, tap water is not, not edible in Albania. Uh, we're very used to that in North, Northwest uh, Europe, but there you have to buy bottled water. Bottled water comes in plastics. So we, we initially said when we build our headquarters, we have to put in the money for uh, a water filtering system, things like that. So you have to think beyond the small thing and you have to say, what's the big look at it? And then we spoke to EIB and this is when we got introduced to the UN SDGs and actually we were like, okay, um, we do a little bit more, we do a little bit less here. We do, actually we cover them at all simply from the mindset, not from saying, this is the USDG we want to achieve. This is the mindset we're having, and this is what we have to do. So social responsibility, for example. I don't know if you know, airline pilots pay their own schooling, and it's something the average cost says here, 150 to $200,000. You get it sometimes cheaper, but that's the average cost. And they have to pay that off. And nobody cares if they pay that off in a pandemic or whatever. So there's a lot of uh, personal insolvencies right now in, in the world where airline pilots cannot pay their bills anymore because they're grounded. Gender equality. Uh, this is the uh, first mother-daughter cockpit in the world, uh, which is in the US Sky West Airlines. Um, but if you look at the largest, uh, the airline with the largest complement of uh, female pilots, it's Air India, and they're below 20%. But pilots, NASA says, are the better, better, uh, better female, uh, fem females are the better pilots. But it's simply not a change. Nobody looks into it. Yeah, you know, we go like, like we did before, and so on. So we think there's a lot more uh, into it than simply looking at that. And we talk about uh, cooks, we talk about uh, waitresses, we talk about cleaners. Uh, we talk about all those people who make the flight happen, which are beyond the pilot and the, and the cockpit crew that you see. I spoke uh, recently about uniforms. There's uh, sustainable uniforms. Um, no airline has it yet. They're all buying that from service companies. They're all applying some little uh, uh, scarves or uh, accessories to it, but the, the uniforms are mostly coming from off the shelf and they are not sustainable. They come from Bangladesh or wherever. Thinking about this is something that increases the cost for us, but um, we think it's going to pay off because they will hold longer. We learned the four social responsibility pillars are actually food, shelter, health, and transport. Transport not meaning flying for vacation. It means going from A to B locally, where you need to go from home to work, where you need to travel. The transport is an issue. In many countries, you, the people walk for miles and miles. Uh, uh, reports about uh, the documentaries about uh, school children, the worst uh, school journeys they have, traveling half a day uh, to school, stay there for the week and half a day go back uh, through hostile area. But that's how they go to school and do school. So that's the transport we talk about. Health, we talk about not everything luxury like we do have in Germany, but uh, more, uh, more like a, an insurance that if you have something that you're being taken care of, that's what social uh, insurance was in the good old days. Also, when you cannot work anymore, that you're not going to fall into a big, big pit. For us, our climate pledge is very clear. We want to go carbon neutral within a decade. 
that's challenging. And I come to that not because of the technology not being there, but because of the energy not being there. The technology to do soon fuel is there, we have it. But the um, energy to transform to green fuel is not there. So the beginning was learning that there's a difference between soon fuel and soon fuel. Soon fuel, everybody talks about soon fuel is the bridge technology to, uh, uh, to aviation. Um, everybody ignores it because it's only a bridge technology. We go hydrogen, uh, which is a big fox screen anyways, big, big uh, light as well. So we learned, okay, there's brown soon fuel made of coal and crude oil products. Um, blue soon fuel being natural gas, excuse me, that's the same than brown soon fuel. In my opinion, it's just a little uh, distraction again, but this is how they divide it. The gray being from, from uh, mixed sustainable and unsustainable resources. And then we have green soon fuel, which is actually what we all look about and with, which we all naturally understand. Soon fuel is green. No, it's not. If you're the energy you, it comes from is, is black, then it's going to be a brown or blue gray soon fuel. Only if it's from renewable energies, then we can talk about green soon fuel. That's what we need. Uh, German Chancellor candidate uh, Annalena Baerbock just said recently when talked about uh, where we store all the energy that is not needed in the in the time when we have high energy like solar. She talked, she said, we're, we're, we're saving it in the grid. Excuse me, that is total bullshit. I cannot use another word for that. Uh, the grid doesn't hold energy, the grid transports energy. So we have to have uh, uh, buffer technologies and we don't have buffer technologies. Our entire energy is meant to be coming from uh, sources where we can um, where we can uh, level out the energy demand. So we, we slow down the energy production from coal or from nu nuclear. We power down a little bit in, at night and we uh, increase it when it's getting hot in, in, in summer days. Looking at aviation, for one of our regional aircraft, we burn, about, uh, we burn about 6 million liters of kerosene a year. That is a small aircraft. On one flight to Tokyo, you have 40, uh, 40 tons of kerosene in the, in, uh, burned on this one alone. So traveling a big aircraft, you come to uh, multiple of that. But for our case, we looked at it and said, okay, how much uh, energy do we need? And uh, we were totally surprised when we counted up 15.4 kilowatt liter. Doesn't sound much. Yeah, that's manageable. Talking about uh, 6 million liters and, and uh, that amount that we talk about, um, we, we suddenly get into, into, um, into gigawatt hours. So 90 to 100 gigawatt hours annually. We plant 200 aircraft in 10 years. We talk about 20 terawatt hours. Where do they come from in green? We're not talking about uh, coal or, uh, 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 or uh, other fossil or nuclear or whatever. We talk about green. Um, we have a problem. When we talk about 5,000 aircraft, which is a rough low guesstimate uh, from the industry, not from myself, um, they're usually larger than ours. We talk about easily 600, 700 uh, terawatt hours a year. That is way beyond what we produce today. Just one industry. Look at freight ships, container ships. Oops. Um, they need a lot of diesel going from Hong Kong to Europe. Steel industry. Uh, Georgs Marienhütte in Germany, one of the big steel makers there, came up and said, yeah, we can, we can convert to hydrogen for cooling, but where do we get it green? There is no green hydrogen. Um, I have those, I'm going to prepare, I'm traveling, so I'm going to prepare the speaker notes uh, um, quick uh, uh, by next week. I'm happy to share that um, and uh, we, we do have it here, but uh, I'm happy to share that uh, to, to Cheetah as soon as, uh, as I have finished it. So there will be the links confirming those claims. Data centers in Frankfurt's, Frankfurt Main City in Germany, um, known for the big airport, 35% of the power consumption is consumed by data centers. That's the official exclusive data centers, nothing but data center. 
how many companies are in Frankfurt operating larger or smaller data centers on their own, which are part of the company and how many people are using mobile phones, et cetera. I truly believe that's at minimum, we're at 50% of the energy that goes into data product, uh, data uh, management. So it's a generational challenge we talk about. We need, to, we need to look at all these things. And then we talk about, when we talked about the energy, where do we get the energy from? We learned we need everything. We don't need only wind energy or solar. Uh, we, we can set up a solar park. I can plaster it, the entire country of Albania just for the need of our, so, of our solar energy, if I use only solar, uh, to operate our aircraft and, and uh, the fleet. Um, I don't think that's a feasible option. So we have to think about water energy, uh, tidal energy, waste to energy, waste to liquid, things like that. We have to think much broader and we're no longer in the, in the, in the luxury to say, we want to go hydrogen. We need to go hydrogen, soon fuel, electric. We have to get it all because that's the only way we can go. And then we have to look at where do we get all that energy from? Batteries, uh, I know Tesla will not like that report. It's actually from a, a National Geographic report about, uh, about uh, lithium mining. Um, it's the same about other raw earths that they still need for batteries and other materials they need for batteries. The mining is devastating uh, and corrupt. So to say, it's a very bad uh, issue on sustainability. So we have to think about not just, okay, we have the batteries here and we put them in the car and the car, everything will be green. But where does the materials come from? We don't look at that. We blend that out. We say, oh, we don't care. It's uh, some coming somewhere, coming like the power comes from the block in the wall. Hydrogen. I spoke to a professor recently um, from Hamburg, not, from, not Bobby Seti, who's been doing this presentation nicely in Hamburg. But uh, talking about a professor, about why do they uh, research in hydrogen when they some, themselves say that sun fuel is a bridge technology that's likely cleaner than hydrogen for the, uh, for the climate, better for the climate. He said, because we're being paid for it. And I, uh, he was asked, actually, what are you, what, who pays you? And he said, the industry, because, and, and asked why? Because uh, investing $2 million into research in hydrogen keeps them from investing into sustainability change. That's pure greenwashing. So when you look at all these things, um, I don't, by the, by the way, I don't want to have a, a minus 250 degree full hydrogen tank above me traveling and then have a leak there or uh, having a crash landing uh, because of bad weather or something. Um, I'm, I think that's, uh, that's quite a challenge for me to think about as an airliner. I mean. So what's the reality on that? Um, are we going this way? Yes, we're going to go hydrogen too, as I said, but uh, which way can we go today to do it? And uh, hydrogen comes up, the first such plane will come up in 2035, 40, according to Cranfield University. Uh, that will be a prototype and until it reaches fleet, we talk about fleet ages of 10 to 20 years. Uh, we talk about way beyond 2050, uh, 2050. Some headline news. Uh, just from the last week, question of promise of green hydrogen because uh, we're, go uh, we're going to lack green hydrogen for the next decades. German politicians are very good at, at claiming we, we are the green country, we're doing everything for green energy and they stall wind parks, they are at the standstill, we, we stall uh, solar parks. We stall uh, sun fuel, sun fuel, Norsk e fuel moved to Oslo. Uh, they're led by German Dresden uh, pioneer Sunfire. But talking to the Europeans, they were told, yeah, we're, we're looking into hydrogen. We're not, not looking into sun fuel. We're not looking into aviation fuels at all. So they went to Norway, not being EU, in order to make it happen. As I mentioned, one liter of sun fuel requires 15.4 kilowatt hours of energy. For aviation, we talk about terawatts. I think that's going to be a future. And who invests into it? Aside of Norway, first facility ever? Nobody. 
So this is where it's not it's not as fancy, it's not as hip, it's not as good looking on your on your investment uh, uh, portfolio. If you invest into Synfuel, it's much easier to get into AI, into blockchain, into med tech, fintech, all these things. Whereas my question on those is uh, how much energy do they use? And what do they do to convert, conserve energy? So to reduce the energy demand, um, which is my big question on, on any of those investments, how green are they really looking at? Yeah, tech is going to be the future to reduce our, our energy demand, but to use more energy to reduce it uh, sometimes, sometimes doesn't make sense. So my question always when I speak to investors about when they ask me about my opinion on on certain investments they do. I'm in a business angel network for many years. It's always like, uh, okay, what are you really doing here? What's the real net impact that you're doing? And I'm not talking short term. I'm talking long term. Like if, if we want to change aviation around, it's not going to be a short term result. We're not going to be green next year. It's impossible. We're going on a journey that takes 10 years if it, if it all goes well. If it if it goes bad, it can go bad too. There's, there is a certain risk to it, but we will at least be profitable. But that's not the issue. The issue is we want to go green. If you want to go green, think beyond your, your little tiny part of it and think, okay, how does that impact the bigger part and does it really make a good impact? And then we are talking about impact investing. Nuclear power is very having a very bad reputation. On the other side, can we live without it? If we take off the coal by 2038, uh, Germany shuts down the uh, nuclear power plants next year. Um, and then they're going to import the nuclear power from other countries. And that's already given. That's not uh, a, a, a claim that's un, uh, un, un, unfounded. It's very founded. We talk about fossils. We talk about 4.6 trillions of crude oil every year. And at 317 kilograms per barrel of crude oil, we talk about almost 10 billion tons of CO2 to the atmosphere every year. Additional, because we, we reuse crude oil products as well and come up. So, but thinking about this and thinking then about uh, statements by the IPCC that 40, uh, that, that um, 40 billions of tons is the amount of CO2 in, 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 in the uh, emitted every year, then where do the other 30, 30 billion tons come from? Uh, that question I didn't get answered yet. It's uh, interesting because we, we do much more than is just seen on the front picture. Yes, we're, we can see very clearly, okay, this comes from there, this is this, and yeah, okay, but then we have 30 billion tons CO2 from other sources. Where are they? What sources are they and how do they get there? So, Europe is, for example, 19.1 million barrels or about 6 billion kilograms of CO2. And if we take just the kerosene out of it, as I, as I said, we talk about very quickly, um, many hundreds of terawatt hours a year to just replace that part of the industry. And we have so many industries that are energy consuming. One of the issues that uh, I was confronted just this week, um, population, grows and population actually grows energy demand. And I don't know if, if it's just me who saw that uh, relation to the projected world population um, being more on the high protection, but anyways, and uh, what the global prime energy demand is. And when we look at the uh, long-term outlook, we are growing the oil demand. So we are growing to get more oil and more coal and uh, then we, we have in Germany headlines that they're going out of the coal, they're going out of the, of the uh, oil, in, uh, oil, they want to replace, they want to go green. But that's the, that's the energy sources, and this is only energy. This is not consum consumables. It's about energy creation, power, kilowatt hours, terawatt hours. That's what's used for that. So that's the 
direct energy demand. Now we have a second energy demand like cars, like planes, like uh, cargo ships, etc. This I love Markus Sutov uh, who posted that nice meme of um, of German uh, the, of the German in the EU. Others are faster. We have big plans. We talk about a lot of plans. We talk the European Sustainability Bank, uh, the EIB, called, claims to be the the uh, oh, sorry the the uh, European Sustainability Bank. But they don't even know how much they saved in the past 10 years where they claim to be doing green investments. Um, so what's the impact? What's the learning curve? What, what, what are the lessons learned? Uh, can you share that? We just started researching that. So big, big words, but nothing behind it. Fit for 55 is delaying tactics of, of its finest. And Plan A made just a nice uh, fact sheet about it. Um, I can recommend you to look it up. I talk about the butterfly effect. We're talking about wonderful uh, water tidal turbines. Uh, where I learned when I heard this the first time, I thought, great, great. And I heard uh, they're building some like this or planning to build some like this in the Gulf Stream. And it's actually up here above Florida, uh, where it's still very strong. They plan to put some, some uh, turbines there to harvest the power of the Gulf Stream. And last week, there was the news that the Gulf Stream actually is going to not reach Europe anymore uh, sooner than the experts believe uh, within this century. So the Gulf Stream will, there will be other means of water transport and streams in the world because the energy has to go somewhere and uh, the earth is turning. But uh, the Gulf Stream itself being so vital for Europe is going to fade and possibly cease, similar to the uh, Colorado River in the US, who rarely makes it to the Pacific anymore, if uh, I've not heard about it uh, for, for more than a decade. Now, Egypt and uh, Ethiopia clash over the uh, Nile River Dam, uh, also expecting that in, in uh, summer season, the uh, water will not, the Nile will not reach uh, the sea anymore. The, the mighty Nile simply being abused for power needs, etc. And people are, starve, uh, are are going to have droughts. Uh, so what's the impact? I always make the joke, my wife is Russian. If we build up more of these wind parks in, in the North Sea, how will that impact the weather in Russia? Because we take terawatts out of energy, out of the wind without any impact? What's the impact? Is, did we ever think about this? I've seen another report about solar energy where under the solar panels, nothing grows anymore. It's too little sun or it's growing le far less than without those solar panels, without the shade. So what is the impact on that? Yeah, we do solar panels. Yeah, everything's great, but what's the real impact? And I say it's political lies. We talk about, it. I don't know if you know the old movie, Back the Dog. I love this one. It's uh, actually the bad country is Albania where I'm now living. Um, making up a war that's not existing to distract from realities. And we have commitments for 2035, 45, 50. Uh, everybody comes up. We're shortening the cycle. We're going to be green by. And we have no idea about how to get the green hydrogen. We're not, uh, uh, not aware about how to green, uh, get green energy. It's the same story all over again. An example, because I was asked, you know, this is not true. This is a translated quote. I have the original on file. I got a very nice email response. On the research for the energy, uh, energy transition in Germany, the FFE, the German energy uh, um, um, research for the energy industry is uh, quoted, we assume an import of these fuels like aviation. And I asked later about it and the same for shipping, the same for other big uh, steel industry, et cetera. We assume an import of these fuels and energies. 
So they're lying in their in their own pockets, and this is what they give to the politicians without the, who don't read all the background and fine print. They just read the big headline. Yeah, we can do it, but it leaves out the biggest chunk in the entire game. So we we have blinders on coming from the research, going up to the politicians, and they're either totally ignorant of reality or they are aware of it and lie to us. I'm afraid if anybody thinks a little bit further on the energy uh, transition, we are having real lies out there. Then we talk about impact investors and I talk to them on a daily basis. We're now talking to, in, to investors, uh, several investors a day at the moment. There's a real cognitive dissonance. The scale of projects is small. Uh, yeah, we, we are investing 2 million here. We're a green investor because we do some impact investment. And what is your impact investment arm uh, compared to other investments? Oh, it's 2%. And you call yourself an impact investor. You invest into, into BlackRock non-green stuff and you think you're an impact investor. Wow. And I can give you plenty of example of large companies, uh, um, Pension funds, especially, they they are pension funds are the biggest uh, um, in investing in BlackRock, who is the biggest investor in fossils. Yes, they invest into the green funds they uh, BlackRock provides, but uh, they they co co invest this way also other investments and make BlackRock the biggest fossil investor uh, still being successful and give them a lot of money to use. So, where's the reality in that? Digitalization, if we do it, adds energy demand. We can put up more power, uh, data centers in Frankfurt or elsewhere in the world and use more and more energy. But where does this energy come from? And if you do, if your solutions and digital needs more energy, where does this energy come from? That's my question. It's all boils down to energy. On impact investment, what's the net impact to the world? What is, you know, not to your little part of the world, but in the broader picture, what is the impact that you make in your investments um, to the world? Make use of public funding because uh, there are public funds out there and the Life A uh, recently, there was a big uh, um, new uh, setup in, in uh, UK, I think, uh, they they published this where they make a big new investment round and the investment round was filled up within minutes by virtual venture capitalists to promote their green projects. Independent small projects didn't have a chance. I have uh, several uh, people from feedbacks uh, that that uh, wanted to get um, applied for investment there and they didn't stand a chance uh, because the money was already allocated to the VCs. Um, cognitive dissonance. Green Tech Alliance, Global Impact Tech Alliance. Um, what is tech? I talk, I call about, uh, talk about aviation. I, I consider it tech too. Um, where are we going with tech? Uh, is tech just a little something that is hip and AI and, uh, and uh, med tech and fintech is all very nice, but is that really impact investment? Um, it can be. I've seen ex many examples which I like, which can be. Then we have Millionaires for Humanity, and I talked to three of those actually and found this very nice because they claim we're not paying taxes, we should pay more taxes. And I said, okay, if you don't pay taxes, why don't you put that money into impact investment? Not in philanthropy, put it in impact investment, make money with it, but make money on the green side with it and put it into a little bit more risky projects. Uh, no, we don't do that. We wait for the, for the, for the countries to tax us because it's simply delaying tactics. Sustainability, as I mentioned, goes beyond climate. We have to think about the people we're working with. We don't need to talk about gender if we have an understanding that we talk about gender, we talk about religion, we talk about uh, ethnicity, we talk about all these things and, and more. And suddenly uh, we go just into 
social responsibility beyond SDGs. It's not ESG compliant. It's not, it might be maybe something that investors don't look in because they're just looking at the little big bit, uh, pinpoints that they can claim on. Um, training, residence, food, health, kindergartens, all these things, uh, that's social responsibilities. And if you don't think about those things in part of your business plan, in my opinion, you're running in short. Paying local taxes, not finding tax evasion models in your business plan, but paying local taxes. As I mentioned before, human rights are not part of the SDGs, very, very reasonable so, because you don't need to duplicate everything. And we need to think about circular economy, like uh, whatever we create, how can we reuse it? If you are into products, like um, I have friends who are doing um, uh, table trays for, for and, and cups and plates for uh, aviation from bamboo. Very nice, very sustainable, but where does the stuff go into the trash? I said, you have to look, look at it the circular way. How can you reuse things like that? then you make an impact. If you just use a renewable source like bamboo and you put it away and that's it, uh, you're not sustainable in my opinion. So we need to go climate neutral together. We need to join forces. We have to think about working together. As an airline, I need to work with the energy industry uh, as one example, but I also need to work with uh, local governments. I need to work with other companies that uh, provide me know-how that I don't have. I'm a specialist in aviation. I'm not a specialist in many other things. So it's not this or that. It's not like, uh, yeah, it's going to be hydrogen or sun fuel or uh, electric. It's going to be all. It's large scale. Look, we, we have to stop looking at the small, tiny fraction of little pieces that we look at. We have to think about industry, industrial size. What is an industry that we want to change and how do we change that? And it will not be something quick and, and dirty. It will be something that requires substantial investment beyond money. We need to solve the energy dilemma. That's the main topic. Um, we need to go circular economy. We have to do much more about this. And we have to find ways to integrate public-private partnerships. That means government money, European investment funds, uh, into green deals uh, together with industries to really make the change and not, not find excuses uh, to go small and make small, small adjustments uh, to avoid the big change. It's a, a picture I keep using in, in LinkedIn for at least five, six years. Uh, it's starting with the man in the mirror and that's a 1986 song. It's not new. Woodstock, anti-nuclear movements. And uh, back when I grew up, uh, the Green Party started in southern Germany, where I grew up. Um, we had we had we fought against uh, nuclear. We my my kids now fight against uh, uh, with Fridays for Future. They they really watch that and and go there if if that's a possibility. GTA does a lot. GTA does a lot. There's a lot of, of uh, uh, efforts to make that change and people who are interested to make that change. And we need to join forces. But we have to start with ourselves. We have to really look at ourselves. What can we do? And then put that into a broader, broader picture and say, OK, where are we in the, in the process? And we need investors who actually understand that we need to go big scale and who put the puzzle pieces together. And we are puzzle pieces. Even me in aviation, we're a puzzle piece. We're not, we're not the panacea, we're not the solution, we're just a puzzle piece. But we tried to try something and we started doing something. Uh, when we didn't sit back and say, oh yeah, you know, everybody can uh, everybody else can do it. So I made this intentionally as an as a food for thought, bringing up controversial ideas. Uh, it's an, Richard has been one of my early mentors back in the 80s, uh, pre-internet on CompuServe, actually, also online. Uh, he always said, for those agree or disagree, it's the exchange of idea that broadens all of our knowledge. And that's actually what I would like to come up with now. We still have 15 minutes. So um, 
welcome to start a discussion now. Yep. Thank you, Jürgen. Thanks for all this input you gave. Um, it's, to... it's, idea, it's ideas. It's something that I work on, not on a commercial basis. Yes, we, we think about it for our airline project, but it's something that is on my, to my heart, as you can see, and it's a lot of, I've put it together. I adjusted it the last week alone. There were at least five, six headlines that really made it into the, this thing because yeah. people start talking about it's like, about the negative uh, impact and that it's all blindsiding and, and we have blinders on. We're, not, we're, we're, blind, we're blending out important areas. Yeah. So we need to do that. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I just make the start here um, as uh, there's so much input also on technical stuff and, and, and what you said and um, uh, the, in, in my opinion, organizations like Gita, this is the very core of what we're about, the very core of an organization such as Gita and we want to lift this up and make it more impactful is to um find to exchange um I, ideas to 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 inform and to find those that can um that can foster um uh, the 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 development towards uh towards uh really reasonable solutions right and for example i'm i'm not from aviation at all i'm not from fuel and whatsoever i'm from i'm from the solar industry so there are so many possibilities to use this reasonably and for and even grow crops below less in germany than in spain for example but why are they putting up greenhouses without solar and then solar farms next to them um uh, stupid <laughs> it can be done in a better way, and that's why we're that's why we're here. Um, and uh, my opinion, my personal opinion um, on that uh, on this whole um, technology for impact is that basically we have all the solutions that we need. Um, it's just the rollout that is so slow, and even um, and the noise out there, which is so loud that we don't hear the voice of reason. Um, and that's uh, that, that's that's my take on that. And I have no simple solution. So I ask you, hey, uh, tell me, <laughs> please. I, I mentioned the I mentioned the um, chaos theory, and how, for example, taking out solar power from the ground will impact the the weather uh, in the in the region. The what's the impact of ground temperature and things like that. Mm -hmm. That stating that is a, it's food for thought it's something that we have to think about and we have to start thinking about it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it we need to start now we, we cannot leave and say we're not doing it an example is we talk about going with uh colibri soon fuel we can put up the technology in a matter of two to three years we can get the engines converted uh, and certified within two to three years that's quick why do i say we need a decade how do I get the energy to convert something into sun fuel? How, where do I get the sun fuel from? That is the real challenge. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, same when you do when you say you're in, in, in solar. Yes, we have to put solar on roofs. We have to put solar into areas, and we have to we have to start doing it. And yes, there is going to be repercussions like uh, on the ground temperature below or in the building temperature below the solar roof. Mm -hmm. I have experience with that. It took uh, uh, putting up two solar panels took away 1.5 degrees in summer temperature mm -hmm. immediately. That was the effect taking out the energy from the roof. So uh, things like this, uh, we also have to consider, but we have to start moving. We cannot sit around and wait, uh, uh, sit back and wait, mm -hmm. in my opinion. All right, um, please. But don't get me wrong, we need to move. We need to start moving. We're going to make mistakes when we start thinking about avoiding mistakes that are costly in the long run, so the better, no, but we have to start. No decision is also a decision. And unfortunately, um, that is uh, so uh, testing, prototyping, admitting mistakes mm -hmm. and adjusting is a way to go. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, it's just not the two, of, not only the two of us here in the room. Um, I see that we uh, that we have big we have more people asking. Um, uh, Gadi made made some input on the uh, on the chat as uh, already. Uh, thank you for that. 
um, because you do have some experience. So um, let's just lose, uh, use this, uh, the, the last minutes here to, to get some, um, some uh, of the input and some of the ex experience of the others here in the room, please. Thanks. So I can just say on, about the agrivoltaics that the uh, double use of uh, of the of the land for farming and uh, solar panels. I'm very interested in in this. Uh, I cannot say that there are great uh, technological breakthroughs that I've heard of. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, architectures and things like that. How to put solar panels vertically or horizontally and different ways. Uh, above the fields and with their experiments, which uh, crops work better with that shading in which parts of the world. Uh, I did find out that in Israel and other very, very sunny areas of the world, there's actually too much sun, too much heat during uh, much of the day where um, shade actually helps to sun the crops. Um, and I don't know, my intuition says this is going to happen. It's going to happen very, very big. And the, the news here I can, I can bring is that Israel, uh, two ministries, I, I wrote it, two Israeli ministries of uh, agriculture and uh, energy have uh, issued a call for uh, entrepreneurs to experiment on quite large uh, areas in Israel and are also changing, working to change the regulations to allow farmers dual use. Uh, we already have it, dual use of, uh, 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 greenhouses. You know, most greenhouses in Israel now have solar panels. Um, so also to allow big areas of farming, also grazing uh, areas, not just farms uh, with crops. So I think this is uh, becoming um, a very big uh, industry and a huge impact. So I'm more optimistic uh, actually about it. It's uh, the, the shade is helpful, probably not in Germany. In, uh, the northern or southern parts of the world, but in very sunny areas, in deserts, in, okay. uh, uh, could be very impactful also for the for the farmers. Uh, I've just shared uh, two links. The one is uh, my own blog uh, article, which is no longer a post, but an, uh, a fixed page, which I'm going to maintain and, and add to it uh, on the sustainable energy dilemma. And uh, the other one you might be interested in, uh, is something uh, which is waste to energy, where I saw a nice uh, example where they are using waste to create energy, liquid, so sun fuel, plus also heat for greenhouses. That uh, that's in, actually in their video, uh, which is on YouTube. It's just an interesting uh, uh, concept to to look at. But as I mentioned, it's it's the the integration. In my opinion, we need not to look only at one. We need to look how we can integrate those and. You give one example, solar goes greenhouse. Mm -hmm. There are now uh, uh, transparent solar panels that, that uh, let enough sun go through, and especially in areas like Israel, or I'm talking a lot with Arabs recently, uh, but also use the, use the energy for uh, ins uh, the light and, and energy inside. So um, that's a combination that is relatively new, which I really like. And I'm absolutely with you on that. Yeah, and there are also we need a, like um, we need... independent uh, energy independent communities. It's not just energy independent, it's uh, sustainable communities in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I know two Israeli companies in the field, and I, I know others in the world. So hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll get to something meaningful in time to save humanity. Oh, well, you, you had this image in the beginning of your presentation. Um, you know, who wants change and who wants to change, yeah, right? Uh, it's us, right? Uh, so uh, who wants to lead, the third image by, of, the, of that is, by the way, who wants to lead change and you see an empty field inside of you. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, the, no, 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 I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of people talk about it. Uh, a few want to few address it and uh, out of the few, nobody wants to lead it. Yes, we are having leaders here. That's, that's what I like about Cheetah and what I wanted to mention about your statement before. There are a lot of initiatives right now looking at these things and they have to join forces too. I was, I was telling about uh, Cheetah at GTA. Mm. I don't know how many of those came over here. You know, there's still some kind of friction between the different uh, activities, whereas we need to 
to join forces. We need to mm. really join forces on all levels to make it sustainable. Mm. I'm also in the Tonic uh, investors community where we have a, a, mm -hmm. a group yeah, of climate too. impact uh, investors. So mm -hmm. lots of great people there too. There's a lot of great people out there. The thing is, everybody, everybody's on a little bit. There's a puzzle piece here, a puzzle piece mm -hmm. there. And now we talk about, for us, we need about a 60 million investment, at least to, to, to launch really in a, in a way that we can go sustainable, on a sustainable road of sustainability. Yes, we can yeah, start with less. Then it doesn't make, you know, then we're just another airline. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But to get these people together is actually uh, this is hard work, and I don't. I'm not sure yet if we can get the syndicate investment completed. We have we have about 20 million now. We need 60. Yes, we can start with the 20, but then we're just another airline. Hmm. What do we want? Do we want to go do the real thing, or do we want to invest into small little scale things and not think beyond and then we talk about investments like you mentioned. I, li I liked that you mentioned the solar with greenhouse. That's just one example. There are so many examples. And mm -hmm. we need to make best use of the energy sources. We, make, we have to reduce energy, in my opinion, but we have to make best use. If you travel from Germany to Albania, by aircraft is actually the most efficient way. I calculated it. If you, if you go hiking, you need a lot of food to go there, mm. plus shoes, plus clothing, plus uh, uh, other things, water, etc. Anything that moves uses energy. So we're not going yeah. to go to zero energy. That's impossible. But we need to make the best use of it. And when we need to travel less. You're right. Uh, we had this exercise at home. No, we don't need to travel less, but we have to think about when we travel, does it make sense? And you will not get the people to travel less. As a matter of fact, I can see the flights right now. They are full like crazy anywhere you go, even into risk areas. Uh, people are traveling. Uh, and I have a lot of people who said, I didn't travel for two years now. I have to do a vacation with my, my family traveling. Uh, yet travel is, is a piece of life and meeting people is a piece of life. And, and uh, to say we have to reduce travel, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, we can do everything on on uh, co on conference screens. There is on nothing Zoom. more fitting <laughs> than your statement to hand over to the next session because it's about happiness. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything? Is there anything um, that uh, we find in travel um, that we can also find elsewhere? Um, what is what makes us happy, right? Um, you say travel is not going going to be less, probably not, or else it might be. It might because rules and regulations have always been around, and rules and regulations are defining how we behave, right? So um, I will not travel around by car with hundred kilometers per hour in my city for one reason, because it's complete, completely nonsense, for a second reason, because it's not allowed. Um, and I might not travel when it's like five times more expensive, or I might just take the train in all Central Europe because there are just no short, uh, short haul flights anymore. That might, be, that might be a future. We don't know. Um, so that's why I said in the very beginning of the session, I think we have to drive airplane travel down. Um, in some way, in one way or another, just to get moving as fast as we need to move. But I would like to see um, just a, a point of view, and I hope most of you will can, can stay in the session here in the next one, um, about uh, change. And um, I'm very excited what uh, how your um, what this will what will it, this will be about, um, and how you'll um, you know. Um, address this uh, this topic. So first, I would like to say thank you, Jürgen, and I really like to continue the conversation also on a.